Good afternoon and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mayer. Here we are on day 255 and I'm continuing the story of Nur al-Din Ali ibn Bakar and the slave girl Shams al-Nahar from the Thousand and One Arabian Nights. Now you might remember that the jeweler had become the go-between for Shams al-Nahar and Nur al-Din. Uh, she had met with Shams al-Nahar uh, shortly after he returned from having met with Nur al-Din and gained his confidence. And Nur al-Din, remember, had been left, uh, having been accused of sending away Abu al-Hassan. And this made uh, that he had suddenly he'd gone back and befriended her um, and gained her trust. And so Shams al-Nahar came uh, to, she needed to make sure that it was going to be, you know, workable for her. And so he went back to Nur al-Din and met with him. And when he came in, Nur al-Din was just a wreck again. And he said, I, I'm, I have worries on top of worries as to what is going to happen next. Because remember, he was left not knowing what was going to happen now with his beloved thinking that he had sent Abu al-Hassan away. Well, <laughs> the jeweler laughed when he saw how upset Nur al-Din was, and Nur al-Din got quite upset with him because he was like, why would you be laughing at me when I'm so miserable? Uh, you can see I'm so miserable. And the jeweler said, well, let me tell you what's going on. And he then let Nur al-Din know that he'd met with Shams al-Nahar, who had come to his house to meet with him to make sure that he was trustworthy and that she had left him with wanting to convey communication to you that you would soon meet. And this, of course, changed his demeanor completely, and he felt like, oh, this is great. I'm going to be able to meet with my beloved. And his heart became light and he became happy. And from this point, the jeweler ended up staying with Nur al-Din into the late afternoon and evening uh, and then spent the night. And in the morning, he left to go back to his house and no sooner he had gotten back to his house then Shams al-Nahar's maid came, knocked upon the door, and told him that she wanted he and Nur al-Din to come to the palace of Rana al-Rashad. And the jeweler said, no, this is too dangerous. You should come to my house. And the maid said, yes, that probably is safer. And he said, I even have a safer place than my own house. To house a little ways from here, but certainly it will be better than here. And so the maid said, okay. She was a little bit kind of concerned about going somewhere that she hadn't seen before, but she said, you make it up and I will come check it out before Shams al-Nahar comes. And so the jeweler went and uh, he had to kind of gather some things together. In fact, the maid had offered to give him money in order to buy food and wine and whatever else needed to be purchased to make their meeting place suitable. And so he turned the money down. He said, I can take care of this. And he got food together and wine. He got all kinds of silver and, and gold cutlery and plates in order for them to dine on, on the best of wares. And he made all of this up and had told the maid where to come. And she came, she saw it, she was delighted with what had taken place. And so the meeting was planned at a certain point in time. The maid went back to go get Shams al-Nahar and the jeweler went to get Nur al-Din. And he returned with Nur al-Din and, and the maids eventually, the maid eventually came back. Uh, 
escorting Shams al Nahar and two other maids. That's all there were. Which was a little bit surprising to the jeweler. And the door was opened to these beautiful women who came in. And the two lovers, Nur al Din and Shams al Nahar, stood and looked at each other and really could hardly move. And their eyes spoke volumes about what was in their hearts. And they looked long, hard at each other. And before they could even take steps any closer to each other, both of them swooned upon the floor. And the maids rushed to Shams al Nahar, and of course the jeweler, who was standing next to Nur al Din, worked to get him to recover his senses as the maids worked to get Shams al Nahar to recover hers. They had pulled them close to each other, and when they were brought back to consciousness, they looked at each other and they embraced. And then they chatted with each other in the softest and sweetest of tones. And the jeweler suggested that they have some wine, which they agreed to. And sitting on cushions, wine was brought to them and they drank a little bit. And, and the jeweler suggested some more and they had a little bit more wine. And they were letting their worries fall away and greatly enjoying each other's company. Shams al Nahar asked if the jeweler had a musical instrument. He returned with a lute which she tuned, and she began to sing some verses upon this lute that touched the jeweler like no other voice he had ever heard. It was so beautiful. And she had just finished playing this piece, singing, when a maid rushed in and told the party that some men had broken in through the, the entryway and were coming. And suddenly in through the doorway entered 10 masked men. Well, the jeweler immediately fled. He fled from the home and he took refuge in a neighbor's house, hiding himself. And as he did so, he could hear screams from inside the house. And he thought certainly that Shams al Nahar and Nur al Din had been found out, and things were going badly for them. And we'll leave the story here, find out what happens next. Thanks for joining. Have a good rest of your day.